Woman, behold thy son. Son, behold thy mother. These are the words of today's Holy Gospel, and they are important for us to understand today's feast. Today's feast is Our Lady, Mediatrix of all graces. And it is a teaching of the church that Our Lady is the intercessor, is the person who, who gives all graces from the Father to the Son and the Holy Spirit. And as she is the spouse of the Holy Spirit, St. Maximilian teaches that there is no grace that is not given to her. So, Mediatrix of all graces means that Our Lady is the dispenser of all graces. Now, this is not yet a definitive teaching, but it is a teaching of the Church. It's not de fide, it's not a dogma. And as you know from the history of the Church, we have four other Mar Marian dogmas, and they all proclaim various privileges of Our Lady. And in the Church, when they were decreed, they brought down many blessings. Because it, in a dogma, when it's de defined by the, by the Holy Father, it is clearly stated exactly what we must believe, and we have a beautiful teaching of what the Church teaches. The first Marian dogma was the Our Lady, the Mother of God. The second was the perpetual virginity of Our Lady. The third Marian dogma back in 1854 by Pius IX was the <coughs> Immaculate Conception. <coughs> And in 1950, we had Our Lady's Assumption into Heaven. These were all defined, and all Catholics must believe that these, these dogmas about Our Lady. And we hope and soon pray that we will soon have Our Lady Mediatrix and Co-Redemptrix of all graces. So this is, would be a wonderful grace for the Church. And whenever we have a dogma proclaimed, we know that the faithful are in, inspired, and holiness develops, and we need certainly a, what we might say, a shot in the arm these days, because so many people don't believe. Maybe if they finally believe that Our Lady is the mediatrix of all grace, they'll go to her, because she is a good mother, as we see in today's readings, and we, especially with the prophet Isaiah, all those who come to me will, get, will grow, will get all kinds of blessings, will get life. Certainly Isaiah, hundreds of years before Christ came, nobody understood that particular passage, but we can see it now in light of what the church teaches us about the Blessed Virgin Mary, how she is the dispenser of all good things. St. Bernard tells us, God so will that we should receive all graces through Mary. This is God's will. All graces come to us through Our Lady. And that's why we see in today's gospel, the last will and testament, when you think about it, Jesus gave us his mother. Son, behold your mother. Woman, behold your son. Once when I was on in England and a, a lapsed Catholic who had gone to some, some Protestant church says, where is Our Lady in the Bible? I thought of this. Our Lady's in the last will and testament of, of Jesus. He gives us his mother. It cannot be more ex explicit than that. Son, behold thy mother. Woman, behold thy son. In fact, blessed Carl, uh, John Henry Newman says, when you know the scriptures, Our Lady is on every page, as we saw from today's epistle from Isaiah. Our Lady is on every page, all with her son. It's Our Lady with her son. And those passages about the Messiah would also give us passages about Our Lady. We know from Isaiah 7, 14, Our Lady is there, right? Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and call his name Emmanuel. So Our Lady is on every page, and she is the mediatrix of all graces. We see this when Our Lady as soon as she was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and she had Jesus within her, what did she do? She went and brought Jesus to Elizabeth, St. Elizabeth. And soon as the child in the womb her, her, saw her Jesus, she felt Jesus coming, or the voice of Mary and the voice of Elizabeth, 
He leaped for joy, even in the womb. Jesus came to him through his mother, through the intermediary of his mother. And at Cana, we also know that Our Lady interceded for the couple which had run short of wine at the marriage feast. She said they have no wine. She saw right away that the couple needed help. And she asked her son for a miracle. They have no wine. And we see that wonderful teaching of Our Lady interceding for souls. So even with the Magi, when the Magi came to the stable, they found Jesus, but Jesus was with his mother. They found Jesus with his mother. So Our Lady is so important. That many of the saints teach us that Our Lady is the heart and the neck of the mystical body of Christ. St. Pius X says, if Jesus is the head of the mystical body, then Mary is the neck and joins, the, and joins the head to the body. The neck is under the head and over the body. Mary is also subordinate to the head, Christ, and superior to the body, his church. But she is the vital link to the, to the head, the head of the mystical body, Jesus Christ, and to the church. She's also the heart of the mystical body because she is the one who pumps the blood, as it were, throughout the body, just like she distributes all the graces to all those members of the mystical body. St. Bernardine says, talking about Our Lady, says she is the neck of, of, the, of our head. By means of her, all spiritual gifts are imparted to the mystical body. All spiritual gifts come from the head through the neck to the rest of the body. While the analogy is, is certainly not a perfect one, it's, it's a good one. So we, we get the, uh, we understand. Our Lady is also a member of the mystical body because we're all members of the mystical body of Christ. And she is the neck and the intermediary between the, the head and the rest of the body. St. Pio felt the same thing. He said he felt closely linked to the son by means of the mother. So all of us, we feel closely, close to Jesus through Mary. St. Bonaventure says, just as God descends to us by means of her, it is necessary for us to ascend to God by means of her. God came to us through Mary, and so we must ascend to him through Mary. St. Louis and St. Maximilian teach, all graces belong to Mary. She gives all graces to whom she wills, when she wills, as she wills. And as St. Maximilian teaches, as all graces come from God the Father through the Son and the Holy Spirit, and as she is the spouse of the Holy Spirit, there is no grace that is not given to Our Lady. All graces come from the Immaculate. All graces. And we see this even in the lives of very many of the saints, Several examples will illustrate this. St. Camillus de Lillis was a, a soldier and not a very good living man. He lived a wretched life in a way. One day he got an illumination of conscience. He saw his life as God sees, saw it. And for, for about an hour or so, he wept over what he had done. <clears throat> And he wondered why he had that special grace, the grace to see himself as God saw him. And he realized that he got this grace on the Feast of the Purification of Our Lady, February 2nd. Saint Gabriel the, of the Sorrowful Mother was a very fine, noble person, interested in the world and becoming successful. And one time during a procession, he looked at Our Lady and he felt her speaking to her. His name was Francis, Francis, Francis. You are not meant for the world, but you are meant for religious life. So that was a special inspiration that he received, a special grace. And we know from St. Francis de Sales' own life, he said as a, as a youth, a young man, as a young person, he suffered great inner turmoil and moral disquietude. 
And then he went to the chapel and prayed a memorare to the Blessed Virgin Mary. And thereafter, he had tremendous peace and never felt the same disquietude. So Our Lady will bring all graces to us. St. Maximilian teaches she cannot refuse us anything. All right? She cannot refuse us anything. Nor can God deny her anything because she never denied God anything. She was always obedient and faithful, the faithful virgin. And this is why she's so special. And it's so important for us to go to Our Lady. And it's very sad when you think about it how some people don't want to go to Mary. They want to go right to Jesus. I want to go to Jesus. I don't want to go to Mary. That's foolishness. We all know from our own family and our own life, we all, whenever we wanted a favor, we went to our mother. We didn't go to our father. We went to our mother. Mom, help me out. Tell dad I need this and I need that. It's only natural to go to the mother. And one of our priests said, do you think our Lord will be pleased with you if you don't love his mother? Do you think Jesus will be pleased with you if you don't love his mother? After all, doesn't it say in the Ten Commandments, honor thy father and thy mother. So we have to honor the mother of Jesus. So, so important. That's why it's very sad when some people don't honor Our Lady. St. Leonard of Port Morris tells us, it is impossible that a person be saved who is not devout to Mary. It is impossible for a person to be saved who is not devout to Mary. Right? That's not exaggeration. The saints all prove that. So we want to go to the Blessed Virgin Mary. This is why Our Lady came to Fatima. God wanted us to realize how important she was to our world, and only it could be saved by her, to her graces. She said, only my immaculate heart can help you. The world was in such a desperate situation in 1917. She said, only my immaculate heart can help you. What is it now? What will it take for us to go to the Blessed Mother and do what she said at Fatima? To pray the rosary and stop offending her son. And then she will give us all the graces we need. So let us pray that the church will soon define this Marian dog, this Marian teaching that we have, Our Lady Mediatrix of all graces. And then we'll have a great outpouring of grace in the world. Because the world will then fully realize that Our Lady is truly the Mediatrix, the intercessor. She gives all graces, she distributes all graces to whom she wills, when she wills, as she wills. So all we have to do is go to her and we will have the graces that we need, the help that we need, because she cannot refuse us anything, St. Maximilian Colby tells us. She cannot refuse us anything. May the Lord bless you. Oh.